ram people down. Holy shit! Hello. What what happened? How many people hurt? 70. 70, 70. Uh how many were in here? Oh, here. This is the where the casualties are. Yes. At Yamate? Is that Yamate? Yeah, Yamate. And uh what happened? Uh I don't know how to how to how to say uh, many people many people uh, uh, step say stampede yeah 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 yes stampede Stampede, yes. Oh, many, many people. Mm, 70. 70. Mm. Dong 這些全部是打橫的足以證明那個疊數足以證明那個地點 yeah, I just explained this uh, yeah. in Chinese You, you can uh, say that again in English okay. if you want to yeah? okay. So on the night of the stampede last Monday um, I was at the intersection of Waterloo and Nathan Road. Uh, we were standing on the northwestern corner and the protesters were pushing the police to the south. At the time, the protesters were actually pushing the police back and as a countermeasure, the police threw some multiple flashbang grenades, which landed amongst the front line. No one was sure, I think tensions were high that night, and it was unsure whether or not they'd simply heard flashbangs or gunshots. Uh, to me, it sounded like gunfire. Uh, to the other Americans I spoke with, it sounded like gunfire. It wasn't. It was flashbangs. But the possibility uh, caused the crowds to scatter at high speed and caused a stampede to occur. So the police were on the southern side of the intersection. The protesters split all three ways on Waterloo Road and to the north on Nathan Road. If you go one block up on Nathan Road, on the left you'll see the MTR station entrance. I stood on the northwestern corner of Nathan and Waterloo with one of the other first aiders as the Raptor squad and the riot police ran by us um, to attempt to get back to where the protesters were. We went through a small alleyway that is parallel to Portland Street, I believe, between Portland and Nathan. As we came out of that alleyway on Pitt Street, the MTR station entrance was just to our right, and we saw the pileup that had begun to happen, or had happened. Uh, probably six to eight layers deep, um, as you saw in the picture, you know, at least uh, six feet, seven feet high. The young man on the bottom of the pile at least had 600 pounds to 900 pounds of force being exerted on them. Uh, when we got in, we were the first there, and you could see that the young men on the bottom, their eyes were glazed over, they were in a lot of pain, they were gasping for breath, they were being killed by the pressure. We attempted to pull them out. 
Other first aiders arrived, attempted to pull them out with us. Firefighters were on the scene, also attempted to pull the children out. We probably only got five or six out due just to the amount of pressure holding these kids in. The riot police came around the backside of the MTR station entrance, and when they arrived, they grabbed us by our vests and pushed us and pulled us away, shouting and beating their nightsticks on their shields and on the wall. Uh, one of the first aid girls was pushed and thrown to the ground. We took her back. Um, they then proceeded to also push the firemen away and keep the firemen from rendering any aid to the young kids there. The young kids, which were all stuck in a pileup and completely unable to defend themselves, to hurt the police, to run away, to resist arrest, they were absolutely helpless. Uh, regardless, the police, if I recall correctly, did use their batons and hit them a few times before they began mercilessly uh, tearing them from the pileup and arresting them all one by one. Well, why do you gone. think the, uh, the, the police would categorically deny that uh, uh, there was uh, any stampede that night? They couldn't see you. Uh, well, of course they saw it. They caused it. It was right in front of their lines. They saw everyone run away. I mean, the effect of the pileup was obvious. These were literally the same police that had just been throwing flashbangs, just been chasing everyone down the street that later came around and pulled us away from the pile of kids there. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind the police know exactly what they did, whether or not it was planned or whether or not it was simply an accident, I don't know. Uh, but they know what happened that night. There is no doubt of what happened that night. Uh, a common thing that happens in stampedes is you'll see the streets full of shoes that fall off people during the mad rush. And the streets had lots of missing shoes here and there. Uh, I have a friend who's a journalist who's documented that. There's no doubt there was a stampede that night. Uh, as you can see, we have lots of witnesses here. Um 你們說的大話是會有人站出來做指證 想問問Cody,可不可以幫助Ms.Mofi,可不可以問一下 Cody, it's a question for you, judging by your own personal professional experience out there about first aid. What's been happening to Hong Kong, uh, in Hong Kong? Uh, is it uh, uh, relatively mild or it's all about the same or, or is it actually even worse in Hong Kong? What's your take on the Hong Kong situation? In general or in comparison in general, to a certain... In, in general. In or in particular, this uh, Pitt Street uh, uh, mm. scenario. Yeah? Well, I've been here since November 1st, so... It definitely escalated since then. It was relatively calm compared to now uh, when we first arrived, but with the start of the university seizures, things definitely picked up as we saw Monday night. Um, in general, what I've seen here has been, I mean, it's very sad what Hong Kong is going through, but at the same time, it's brought people together in an absolutely amazing way and made people realize uh, what the cost of freedom really can be and just what they have to do to protect it and the responsibility that comes with being free. And just like we probably do in the America, um, sometimes you forget that, and then your liberties begin to slip away. And next thing you know, it's too late. As Hong Kong is seeing, it's too late to really have a peaceful resolution that requires these protests. Um, but you wouldn't really want to compare the uh, uh, brutality, the severity of the uh, situation. But it's brutality of the police is... Uh, it's absolutely horrible to see and to witness. And you know, we came expecting to deal with 
tear gas and occasional cuts and bruises and now people are really getting severely injured. Um, I mean, in addition, we now see a pretty high chance that a live round could be used and someone could be shot or killed and the types of cases you might deal with on the street are far beyond the qualifications of most first aiders because we all have basic first aid training. We're not trained to deal with gunshot wounds and such, but it's turning more and more into an actual battlefield than simply a, a street protest. Mm. Okay. May I ask, uh, have you joined any of the like mask protests or rescue, rescue before in America? Have you in America, it? no. Yeah. Mm. No, but uh, also I would like to ask, uh, just now when you mentioned about the flashbang, mm -hmm. can you mention about more about that? How, uh, how could you hear or how the situation is that? It's quite loud, so a flashbang aid is meant to disperse the crowd. It emits both a very bright flash of light and also a very loud bang, um, which sounds very, very similar to a gunshot. So when the police began to have to retreat because the protesters were pushing them back, they threw these flashbangs to disperse the crowd. Now, I'm not trained in crowd control techniques, but my understanding would be you throw these near the crowd so that they frighten individuals and cause them to run. These were thrown directly at the front line. And another thing, the police saying that there was no stampede, not only did they cause it through those flashbangs and see it with their own eyes, unless they're absolutely blind, they continued to provoke it because as the protesters ran, you could see the police running after them, firing tear gas as they ran. And tear gas obviously is meant to be fired near a crowd and the gas goes into the crowd and disperses the crowd through the unpleasant effects of the gas itself. But what we see now is the police using these tear gas capsules as a projectile in itself. And they were firing them at the protesters, at these young people as they were running away. Do you remember after the police shooting about the flashbang and then they, then they immediately run after the protesters and also with the tear gas? Mm -hmm. they? Yes. Uh, could you explain the, like, the sequence after how many flashbangs and then the tear gas or they run out of them? How many actual flashbangs were thrown? I don't know. Each one bangs multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, so I was standing Not at the... about how long? It's like a firecracker. Mm -hmm. It's rather rapid. So those were thrown and as soon as they began to go off, you saw everyone scatter and begin to run. And as soon as they ran, the police didn't wait. The police charged as soon as those flashbangs went off. So the police, as the protests were charging, the police were running after them, firing tear gas. In a matter of seconds, less than a minute, to be sure. But do you think in a minute the police use flashbang and then they run after them and using tear gas is reasonable or not at that situation because uh, as we all know uh, between Payne Street and also uh, the Nathan Road that would be a narrow alley right yes do you think it's reasonable to use such short flat lane uh, run after them and also tear gas in a short period of time and a short distance do you think it's reasonable I haven't seen very much here that I consider reasonable when it comes to what the police have done to be quite honest um, the police were being pushed out, pushed back by the protesters, and the protesters were using Molotovs. So from a purely tactical standpoint, I suppose it does make sense what the police did, but from a moral standpoint, it is inexcusable. Okay.